Today we're going to be modifying the Shure 57 microphone. We're going to do that by removing the output transformer located here on the microphone. And uh, to do that, we're going to need a couple tools. To do the mod, you're going to need a heat gun, a soldering iron, some solder, a small bench vise, two 22 gauge stranded wires, both about three inches long, a small flathead screwdriver, solder sucker, and a wire stripper that can double as a pair of pliers. The first thing you're going to need to do is unscrew the XLR connector from your microphone and unsolder one side of that output transformer from the XLR connector. Next you're going to unscrew the microphone and unsolder the other side of the output transformer. I like to make sure that these mounts are actually very clean, so whenever you install your new wire, uh, you've got a good clean surface to put them in. So I use my solder sucker to remove the excess solder. Next, you're gonna take your heat gun and heat up the body of that microphone. The upper transformer is actually being held by basically hot glue. So what you're doing is melting that glue and then gently pull out the output transformer. There it is. And you're gonna take your wire and strip the ends of it off. Make sure if you've got any uh, random pieces of stranded wire that you smooth them out. Make sure uh, you got a good, clean, straight piece of wire. Then you're going to tin the end of those cables. This is going to help the solder flow and uh, attach the cable much easier. So you're going to put um, both those cables into your XLR connector. And next, put the connector into the microphone. So I put red as um, pin two, indicating that it's the positive side. And uh, whenever you connect it to the, the other part of the microphone, you'll see here in a second, there's a plus that's gonna be indicating um, the positive side of that waveform. So it's the positive pressure from the diaphragm. So once you set up your uh, rig here, you can get the cable put through those connectors and then I'll heat up the excess solder that's left there and get a okay kind of a attachment. You just want to get it kind of lightly attached so it doesn't move around on you. Once it's loosely connected, you're going to want to add some more solder so that it's a real solid connection. All you gotta do is screw the microphone back together. The mod's complete, very simple. And uh, I throw some tape or something on that microphone so that you can make sure you can distinguish it from the other 57s you got. Well, there you have it guys. You now have a modified 57 microphone. It's a great mod if you're just starting out learning how to solder, uh, not too difficult to do. And uh, when you're running 48 volts to this microphone, you shouldn't run into any problems with that. The only cautionary thing I could tell you about that is if you've got a patch bay and you're using a patch bay at your studio, um, you could run into problems just by the nature of how the patch bay works. Whenever you're unplugging the cable, uh, you're not releasing the 48 volts from pins two and three evenly just by pulling out that cable. So what it's actually doing is causing a voltage differential between pins two and three. And that'll translate into maybe overexerting the microphone's diaphragm and causing some damage to it. So kind of in my typical fashion, if something's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. I wound up having a laser etcher and etched this no 48 volt sign on my microphone and a Ghostbusters no phantom power logo on there. Thanks for checking out the video and I hope it was helpful to you. Uh, I'd like to hear what you guys think about this microphone and how the modified 57 compares to a stock 57 on different sound sources and just kind of how it's working out for you. So please leave some comments and I'd like to check it out. Thanks very much.